Greetings of peace, my sisters and brothers in the Pauline family. We are on the fourth month of our reflection on the 10 topics of the theme of the Synod on Synodality. For this month, our topic is Speaking Up. Let us begin our reflections with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote this order. Do not let ignorance lead us down in the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All these we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father, and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. In October 2023, the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops will convene in Vatican City. With a theme for a synodal church, communion, participation, and mission. According to Pope Francis, synodality is a style. It is a walking together. And it is what the Lord expects of the church in the third millennium. Father Alberione writes, The whole world can be likened to an immense parish. The Pope's parish. This is your field in which the gospel workers continue to sow good seed. And this renders us to be co joiners of the people in the parishes where we are, in synodal way, in communion, participation, and mission. In our January recollection, Father Norman has expounded on these three important points. I feel that the right persons to share with you the third theme of the preparatory documents for this synod is speaking out at the SSPs and the DSPs. I feel insecure to share whatever I know about media, its trends, and those that pertains to social communication. I need to console myself why I am here to share my reflections on this theme. There might be other aspects of speaking out that can be explored, not only through the media or the preaching ministry of the ordained ministers, but the speaking out that happens to us every day. All are invited to speak with courage and permission that is, in freedom, truth, and charity. What enables or hinders speaking up courageously, candidly, and responsibly in our local church and society? When and how do we manage to say what is important to us? How does the relationship with the local media work? Who speaks on behalf of the Christian community and how they are chosen. With this thought, I found three ways of speaking out that can be explored. I will share very briefly on the first one and leave the rest to the competent media practitioners and masters. I can share more on the second and third ways of speaking out. 
and they are social media and the local media preaching mission of the baptized and communal speaking out. Local media is any information provider of a locality, newspaper, television channel, radio stations, magazine, books, journals, billboards of a given locality. It helps to convey information to the public from social to political, health, education, business, domestic, domestic issues, they usually provide on the spot information. Aside from the local media, we speak out through the many means of modern communication, email, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, doors, TikToks, and many more. Whatever means of media we use to speak of, local or modern, we are asked to guard and to scrutinize fake news versus true news. Misinformation, disinformation, and malformation. It is our Christian duty and responsibility. In the book, Apostolate of the Edition, number 25, Father Albrion writes, The prime and principal duty of the Apostolate of the Edition is to communicate to the people the Church's teachings by becoming a relay, voice, a loudspeaker of the Church, of the Pope, of the Bishops, of the Catholic priests. Now I will, let's go to the second way of speaking out. And this is, when we receive the sacrament of baptism, we automatically share in the threefold mission of Christ, his priestly, kingly, and prophetic mission. Pope Francis urges all baptized Christians to be open to the demands of the gospel. He said, Let us pray that every baptized person may be engaged in evangelization, available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has the flavor of the gospel. The prophetic mission is about witness and conversion. The church in this mode addresses social issues with great clarity and urgency, demanding action and situating itself as a community in contrast to the established institutions of society. We as prophets stand for what is right, good, and true. Election time is one of the best times to speak up with courage and parisia, that is to speak with boldness to relay the truths that we know and to stand for them, but also to do this with charity. These days that I am involved in the water's education and go around the parishes, people would always have this first thought, Caesar is coming to endorse a candidate. And the tendency is to find words to defend their choice. In a very charitable manner, I am telling them, this is not about the person you are choosing, but it is about the qualities of the person that you want to know. In the spirit of prayer and discernment, we want to teach you how to evaluate and examine the lifestyle of the person we want to go. Not mentioning any name and finding discreet words to speak out the wrongdoings of these candidates. I know the person I encounter in this voters' education listen. And at the same time, they're able to speak out their thoughts 
their hopes, and their anxieties. War between Russia and Ukraine is a good time to speak out to support and to take side on what is humane. In the, in the Diocese of La Union, there are about less than 10 persons who were stationed in Ukraine. And when the war broke out, they fear for their lives. They want to come back. And their captain told them, it is up to you. So now here they are in La Union, Japanese. And from time to time, remembering or imagining the missiles, the warplanes flying over their ships. And this brings them trauma. But the sister who is in charge of the migrants ministry visit them and give them food. And in her own special way, in her own way, trying to reach out to Owa how they can be helped. The church accepts the reality of social sectors and seeks to effect change by collaborating with the institutions of society in a long, painful, and incremental process. Every one of us has a calling to be prophetic. In the gospel, Jesus shows us the role of prophecy in the church, speaking on behalf of God in a time when there is conflict within or outside the community. How do we go about it if we want to carry out our prophetic role? Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 and the following describes how we can be prophetic. If someone heard in the community, the prophetic person goes first to the individual, confronts the person, talks about it. If that person doesn't settle the problem, then the person goes with two or three witnesses so that the thing becomes public. Finally, if that doesn't settle it, the person goes and brings it before the whole community. The church then is speaking out prophetically. By living this prophetic way, we demonstrate love for one another. That becomes a powerful message of the love of Jesus. All of us must think of our prophetic role as disciples of Jesus who speak the word of love that brings forgiveness, peace, and healing. This is being a prophet. Speak with boldness to become agents of change. And the best results come out when the church listens the way God listens. At the same time, speaks gently but firmly with charity. Let us move on to the third way of speaking. The practical ways we live our gift and capacity to speak out in the community and in the ministry. This is when we speak with courage and charisma, integrating freedom, truth, and charity. Let me borrow this story. In one diocesan catechetical celebration, the speaker asked the children, What did you learn from your religion class? A child answered, Quiet, quiet, quiet. What the catechists tell the children is opposite with what the church teaches us to talk boldly. Probably, these children did not only close their mouths, but also their ears. Speaking out is not only making sounds or noise, but an art of expressing one's thoughts, feelings, course of actions I want to do. When we speak out, 
we let people know our thoughts, our stories, our experiences, our feelings, sentiments, dispositions, and values. When we speak out, we allow our listeners to discover who we are. What we speak out reveals our values, our concerns, our priorities in life, our vision. We are reminded by Isila chapter 27 verse 6. One's speech disclosed the bent of one's mind. A healthy, vigorous mind produces wholesome thoughts. Fill the mind with wholesome thoughts, both natural and supernatural, are the lights in the book, Sanctification of the Mind. What we speak out reveals what kind of formation we have or we don't have. Formation is building up a solid foundation so that we may become the persons God wants us to be. Formation makes us persons who can rejoice in prosperity and stand firm in adversity. As relational beings, we can't avoid talking to people. As members of community, we interact with our brothers or sisters. As ministers, we encounter people. We minister to them. We speak out. We listen. In our parishes, the parish priests are the ones who always speak out. He is in authority to do so. In some parishes, there are some outspoken parishioners who do not care what they say and how they say it. Open times, the humble ones will just stay behind, keep quiet, and will not speak out even they have good points to say. While it is true that we have a prophetic role to do in the church and in the society, and we have good points to bring out that may be transformative, it is also good to check our motivations in speaking out boldly. Why do I speak out? Maybe I have the good intention to bring out something that is new innovative, creative, something that will create newness of participation in the church. Maybe I want to share something for the good of the person, for the good. Something that will help us to move up, to keep going together in a more creative way. Maybe I am already fed up. I am tired of listening to this person. They just talk and talk and no action. In the layman's language, we call them drawing love. When I speak out, where are my words coming from? Do I reflect first before I speak out? Do I speak out first and then I reflect what I said? Most of the time, the latter is our attitude. Speak promptly. And afterwards, when we reflect, we will say and feel guilty. I should not I should not have spoken those words. Are my words coming from a heart with pure intention, a heart purified by my love for God and for my neighbors, or simply do I want to raise myself and subtly tell the persons listening to me, I am better than you. If my words are coming from the motivation to speak out for transformation, including myself, I am sure my words are coming from a heart to live 
purified by the word of God, with the inspiration from the Holy Spirit, integrating my personal values and convictions, words that are spoken nicely. But every word spoken, not based on truth and genuine concern, or not leading the listener to truth, is deceitful. Words spoken for gossips, flattery, foolishness, hypocrisy, lies will deceive the hearts and the minds of the listeners. Let us be aware of the words that we speak. How do I speak? Or how do I speak? The letter of James chapter 1 verse 19 says, Everyone should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. But the opposite always happens. We are quick to speak and we don't listen to the voice of the other. We are carried away by our impulsiveness. Let us examine our heart, mind, and will. A perfect control of ourselves. Say appropriate words in every circumstance for the salvation of our brothers and sisters. It is our primary duty to speak out the truth with freedom, but always in a charitable way. No judgments, no prejudices, no biases. This way encourages others to be courageous bold and free to come out of their shelves. They become more confident to speak out because we show encouragement, acceptance, and about all, non-judgmental. It is always good to check ourselves. It is always good to check ourselves. When I feel that others are not comfortable with me, are my words objective or subjective? Are my words expressed for the good of the other or for my own good? Do they sound caring or judging? Do people feel that I care for them? That's why I'm speaking these words to them. Or they feel I am putting them down. I am misjudging them. Are they life giving, offending, or hurting? When our words is like when our words are life giving, people become hopeful. People are enlightened. People want to move forward. If they are offending or hurting, they stop. They feel restricted to speak. Do I speak words with respect, care, concern, compassion, and love? Are my words coming from a pure heart? A Christian heart must be seed of purity, of truth, of wisdom. Wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And again, Father Alvarez writes, On the humble of mind and heart, God showers His graces. St. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 tells us, A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good but an evil person out of the store of evil produces evil for from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks we pray that our words may bring light life and hope to others let us be beacons that lights the way of our brothers and sisters. Let our words be, give 
let our words give them life when they are depressed and let us give them hope when they are hopeless. May our words restore the dignity of the person we are talking with or talking about. No marites. May the words we speak out be inviting, encouraging, and build up the person. When we speak the truth, our listeners resist. We learn from Father Alberione. Always speak the truth with charity. When we speak the truth, our manner of speaking must clearly show our respect, love, care, concern, and compassion to others. If we want to be in synodality with the local church, with the parishioners in our parish, and with one another, let us purify our hearts so that we can speak with courage and alicia. We can speak out a truth in freedom and charity. A pure heart speaks out with humility and truthfulness, always with respect, care, concern, love, compassion all the time, wherever we are and whoever is before us. In our silent time of reflection and prayer, let us ask these two questions. What words do I speak out to others in different situations in life? Are they inviting, encouraging? Do they build up the dignity of persons? How are my words right giving to others? Or in some cases, how do my words lead others to death of integrity, esteem, and to shazam or sin? Having said all this, one thing remains true. No matter how many good words you have spoken, action always speak louder than words. Let us be courageous and bold to work. Again, in this topic, speaking out, let us continue to reflect and practice the means we can speak out through the social and local media. By our mission as prophetic sharer in the mission of Christ, by sharing in the prophetic mission of Christ as baptized, and the speaking out that happens to us every day. Let us pray together. My dear and sweet Mother Mary, keep your holy hand upon me. God, my mind, my heart, and my senses, that I may never commit sin. Sanctify my thoughts, affections, words, and actions, so that I may please you and your Jesus, my God, and reach heaven with you. Jesus and Mary, give me your holy blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.